You're watching Global Insights, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. I'm Wu Young. South Korea is at a critical inflection point. The country has become an economic powerhouse based on its manufacturing and cutting edge hardware based tech, uh, in industries, which were largely driven by conglomerates. However, in the era of the fourth industrial revolution, innovation is considered crucial to creating new disruptive technologies and to this end, startups play an important role and the government has been aiming to foster innovative hubs uh, throughout the country. But financing and the right resources and regulatory conditions, they must all be in place first. So today we discuss what's needed for Korea going forward. And for this, we have joining us today, Christopher Lay, Director of Hong Kong Trade Development Council here in South Korea, and Jay Lee, APAC CEO of Open Exchange. A very warm welcome to you both. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Sion, for having us. Um, my first question is to you, Jay. So um, now South Korea made headlines last year when it became the 10th largest economy in the world in terms of GDP. But it seems that there's still some, uh, there's a long way to go when it comes to attracting uh, global finance. So uh, first of all, um, what are some sectors with the highest growth potential in your view? So thanks for the question, Sion, and uh, thank you for having us here. I think um, in terms of sectors, it's always going to be, I suppose, innovation driven sectors and industries. And those are typically broader technology, as we term it. So the likes of AI, robotics, process innovation enablers, et cetera. But I think the um, attractiveness of that um, uh, innovation cycle is the fact that it is ubiquitously applicable to multiple industries. That means the tangible addressable market, the TAM as we speak of, is quite large. And Korea tends to be a very fertile ground for those technology innovation cycles. So we think that from a structural perspective, those sectors and industries will continue to play a major, I suppose, role in that, uh, I guess, innovation cycle and leading the, the growth for the broader industry. But at the same time, I think I personally tend to be uh, industry agnostic um, because I think for every single sector, every different industry, there are innovators uh, in, by, by their own rights and they continue to innovate whether you're part of the old economy sector or the frontier sort of the technology, I suppose, a leadership. So from that segment, I think um, Korea has enough, I suppose, population and, and sample group of those uh, innovators that will continue to be, I think, attractive to the global audience. Right, I see. And well, now Christopher, South Korea has been trying to nurture a lot of new uh, emerging sectors, uh, new industries for the country's future growth. And this requires a lot of data, innovation, research, collaboration. What are the uh, challenges and opportunities you, you see for South Korea and how might they possibly collaborate with the likes of Hong Kong? Sure, and thanks for, for having me here. Um, I think challenges, are, there's two major challenges. One, of course, is from an economic perspective. Um, you know, the global economy is in a, a relatively tricky situation at the moment, um, whether it's, you know, exports or interest rate, et cetera. Um, I think from a medium to longer term um, perspective, um, in terms of demographics, um, it is an aging population here, birth rate is very low. So it is very critical for Korean companies and startups to really start thinking ahead and start thinking about going cross-border. Um, and of course, in terms of technology innovation, I think um, you, they ought to have to consider the idea or, or the concept of data diversity. Um, you know, there's a very in innovative startups here, but a lot of them are relatively focused on the domestic economy. But for example, if you're in AI, if you need to go beyond Korea and access other markets, then it's very important that you also have data sets from other economies. Um, in terms of working with Hong Kong or collaborating with Hong Kong, um, you know, of course, Hong Kong is a financial center, is a business hub, um, particularly in terms of investors in Hong Kong. Um, we encourage Korean startups to work with them, not just from a fundraising perspective, of course, that's very important, but of course, investors in Hong Kong also have very good networks, whether it's in mainland China or Southeast Asia or pretty much everywhere in the world. So from the sort of strategic partnership perspective, that could be very helpful. And Hong Kong also have, you know, is an innovation hub. There are lots of um, laboratories, whether it's China State laboratories or those that are by you know, world leading universities or corporates. So doing some sort of joint venture with them would be very helpful. There are also preferential access, for example, in healthcare. Um, data genome from China can be exported through to Hong Kong. So that can be also very helpful if you're doing clinical trials, for example. So I think just to be more um, sort of receptive to being flexible and, and also expanding and being diverse in, in how you sort of frame your business model. 
gives it that room and flexibility, a lot of resources as well that we can uh, very close in terms of geography as well. Yeah, so definitely. Another advantage. And well, uh, Jay, your company helps um, enable startups mm. to really uh, get out basically out of Korea and appeal to uh, potential investors mm -hmm. abroad and you're doing that for both small and large companies. But when it comes to startups though, uh, the reality is here in South Korea, many of them fail to make it past the three year, five year mark. And mm -hmm. well, what do you think is the biggest reason for that? I think um, you know, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and uh, we believe that we can make a difference here. The um, I, I think the, as I alluded to earlier, um, Korea is a very, very uh, fertile ground in terms of various different types of startup programs being offered by various different government agencies as well as different regional governments, um, some private institutions, etc. So the whole, I think, the industry or the um, the pool of capital that has been facilitated or established to help uh, the incubation program to get um, the startup companies off the ground, it's extremely um, enriched versus what I remember from 20 years ago in Seoul. But at the same time, I believe the uh, cohesive and structural ecosystem that is required for the, to allow the companies to continue to sustainably grow beyond that five-year mark, as you mentioned, is quite critical. And we're very focused on trying to help that ecosystem be not just uh, domesticated within Korean soil, but to go across border. So I think the, um, the critical element here is that an established uh, ecosystem, a funnel, that helps the local companies be featured in a structural manner to the overseas audience, whether they be financial investors or strategic investors is quite critical. I think it's important to recognize that there are multiple different partnerships that will allow um, a much, I suppose, a larger uh, audience and a tangible addressable market for these startup companies. And there are structural ways to do that. And I believe that I suppose the, the connecting the dot element is probably what's missing. And I think a step-by-step -step, um, curation of allowing the companies to uh, build a proper uh, investor relations related assets beyond just PR is quite critical. And we're trying to help them, I suppose, establish that funnel via multiple partnerships, even working with the likes of London Stock Exchange Group and helping these companies feature and inspire to potentially list in the overseas markets eventually as well. So there are multiple steps and we're just at the cusp in the beginning of that phase, but I think there are a lot of passion and the drive to um, be part of that ecosystem. And I think we're just really at that uh, beginning stages of connecting those dots beyond Korea. As Chris mentioned earlier, uh, and I guess uh, instilling that cross-border element is extremely um, uh, important. And I think the, uh, at least there's fertile ground to get that off the grounds at this point. Yeah. I see. And yeah. well, Chris, uh, what do you think makes South Korean companies or the South Korean market uh, attractive for foreign businesses? Well, I think firstly, Korean culture has never been more popular. Um, you know, K-pop, you know, entertainment movies, Squid Game, etc. But it goes beyond just entertainment, of course. You know, anything culture related, whether it's um, fashion and design, um, beauty products, food, for example, these are very popular. So naturally, South Korea is very attractive in terms of sourcing trends. But it goes beyond that. Um, it's also an advanced economy. Um, it, it demands and also produces a lot of quality and innovative products. It's very technology centric as well. So um, from that perspective, whether it's from import or exporting, it is a very attractive market. Um, in fact, South Korea was Hong Kong's fifth largest trading partner last year. Um, and what we're trying to do, of course, is to sort of sustain that, um, try to curate connections between Hong Kong businesses and Korean businesses, whether it's in merchandise trade or um, you know, providing services. Um, you know, for example, you know, what we, we recently helped uh, some Hong Kong companies in, in trying to both source products from Korean producers and also to distribute their products from other economies through Hong Kong into Korea. And of course, um, you know, from the IT sector, there are you know, great interests. I, I, I know of a Hong Kong um, company that is um, in the process of building a data center in Busan as well. So there's, there's a lot of interest. Um, it's cross-sector and, um, you know, very, I think from a very good perspective for South Korea, I don't see that going away anytime soon. Right, and actually you're helping a lot of South Korean businesses um, really set up in Hong Kong as well and really expand their market. So mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate on how you're doing that? Sure, I mean, it, it really depends on, on how or what each individual company's um, priorities or strategies are. Of course, if they 
you know, if they immediately they want to set up a, a, an office or a company in Hong Kong, there are things or guidelines we can give them. We can also introduce them to professionals who can help them with the process. But if they, you know, maybe a little bit earlier in the stage, if they're looking for business partners or, or like I mentioned earlier, looking for investors to work with, we can try to curate the connections as well. Or even if they, even at an earlier stage, if they're looking to perhaps, uh, you know, look for a partner in R&D or, you know, maybe wanting to speak to a regulator, we can try to facilitate that as well. Um, basically, we want to be like uh, the first point of contact for Korean businesses when they think about either doing business with Hong Kong or doing business through Hong Kong with other markets. Great. And well, Jay, now uh, going forward and we're facing a time of, you know, continued uh, geopolitical uncertainty, economic crises in many countries, you know, fluctuating currencies. Well, in this kind of scenario, what do you think could be the way for South Korea to forward for South Korea to uh, be an attractive investment uh, sort of market? Sure. Uh, I think that's a very uh, important and critical question, Suyo. Um, the uh, Korea is very unique, and we focus on the fact that uh, innovation cycle, I guess, transcends the and is somewhat agnostic to the economic cycles. So that uh, wh whatever the GDP cycle we're in, the innovation cycle will never stop. And Korea in aggregate tends to be extremely high, uh, highly proficient in terms of technology. A population in aggregate would find that to be very true relative to other markets uh, and countries. Um, within that context, um, I think the, the, in order to make Korea market more appealing to the overseas audience, I think it's the, the element of appeal is already there in terms of the content and the technology leadership. Uh, it's just the, I suppose, the connectivity and allowing that articulation of that content and the technology leadership to the global audience is what's missing. That's what I think um, somewhat ties in with the topic we just earlier discussed. The fact that um, the, uh, with, despite such richness in terms of content and technology leadership, that the ability and I suppose the um, experience and the opportunity given to the local startups as an example, um, to be able to articulate that to the global audience in an effective and a cohesive structural manner, that's the missing link. And that needs to be established in a very structural manner. And that's something that we can work together with the likes of uh, all the different government bodies, such as the uh, Korea Development Bank, KISAD, Korea Startup Agency, or even the Seoul City and the different government, uh, I guess, investment bodies can get together and working together with the private sector and uh, both overseas and domestic. And that will basically create a very systematic funnel and the network that will allow for a sustainable, I suppose, path for these companies to articulate their business models and the technology leadership. So it's, it's really um, uh, better uh, mobilizing, capitalizing on the existing content and articulating that to the global audience. And I think this is probably a good time to do that uh, more than ever. All right, sounds like we've got the right tools, the right kind of content you said yes. just needs to, we need more efforts to make them uh, flow more smoothly, right. work together and well. Uh, so Chris, now uh, I think this has to be the last question because we're already sure. out of time, it seems. Um, what are some improvements that you'd like to see for more cross-border collaboration and investment uh, with South Korea? Um, I don't think I'm the first one to, to voice this, but um, Korea does have a rather complicated set of regulations for foreign uh, businesses, whether in terms of foreign investment or company formation or, or employment, import restrictions, etc. Uh, and sometimes they can be a bit confusing and, and opaque to foreign businesses. So from that perspective, of course, it, it would be very helpful if we can streamline um, the regulations to make it um, easier and more consistent. I think tying on what Jay mentioned just now, if we make it more attractive for foreign businesses and foreign investors to come to Korea, you are also giving a lot more opportunities for the startups here or even the SMEAC to work with the international market. So I think it's a win-win collaboration in terms of making both easy, the, the barriers to entry lower and also making the, the local economy much more uh, sort of articulate and capable of, of for those cross-border partnerships. I see. Well, we're going to have to end the conversation here today, I'm afraid, but that was Christopher Lay, Director of Hong Kong uh, Trade Development Council here in South Korea, and Jay Lee, uh, APEC CEO of Open Exchange. Thank you both so much for your time today. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Also, thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Global Insight airs every day at 9.30 a.m. Uh, South Korea time. So join us again wherever you are in the world. Have a great day or evening. Goodbye.